and just say everything's going to be all right when it's not all right and radiation levels go up. So I'm sure, as you know, Mr. Stein, they've just raised the, the level worldwide, not just here, to just say it's safe. And as you pointed out, right. rotting 20, 30, 40, and 50-year-old reactors. Fukushima was like, what, 39 years old, had yep. three decades of waste. that They weren't even shipping it out. They're storing it there. These companies don't care. There's no place to ship it to. Nobody wants it. There's no place to ship it to. They store it on site all over the world. Now, here's the thing. So what's going to happen? What I'm saying to you, though, is, is it all rots? What is the nuclear power industry going to do as, 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 as these things start blowing up and melting down everywhere now on almost a weekly basis? I, I guess they're going to just say radiation is good for us because that's the new official policy. No, nah, they're just going to say, I'm sorry, we didn't know. You know, why doesn't somebody make a permanent repository for all of this stuff? And, and then, you know, where do they put? You got a decommissioned nuclear reactor. What do you do? You encase, they encased it in concrete, in a big concrete sarcophagus at Chernobyl. You know, at least that's better than what they've done in uh, Fukushima. It's just still sitting there on the top of the earth in Fukushima. I don't know what they're going to do. Smoking. With it. It's still smoking. Yeah. Now, here's the thing for about a billion dollars, half the price of a stealth bomber, there's new technology, vacuum tube, giant vacuum tube technology that can switch so rapidly to protect those massive transformers from grid meltdown. And so for about a billion bucks, they could put those in all over the United States to protect our 350, well, protect our, there's like 900 or something of these, or, you know, 800 of these, 350 they protect to, to, to blow. They can protect them for about a billion bucks. For another billion bucks, they could go to every nuclear facility and mandate that we store a year's worth of fuel and that we have EMP hardened containers on site with backup batteries, backup generators, and backup fuel so that in the event that stuff gets fried by an EMP or cooked by a solar storm, that at least we prevent nuclear Armageddon. Now, I, you know, I'm not so naive to think that they were going to just shut down those nuclear power plants instantly. I'd love to see them shut down. But I'm saying, you know, for at least for a billion bucks, we could at least protect them in the meantime before we get these new technologies online and can just shut them down for good. Well, Matthew, I want to talk about the different legislation then and how we hopefully get this done. But let me just ask you, because you're, you're obviously a really smart and, and you know tuned in guy. From your research, why do the major corporations and the ruling class obsess all day and trillions of dollars a year to fight terrorism and have spies everywhere and a new report out, FBI enlists Internet cafe owners to spy on customers when you literally have a better chance of dying from snake bite or wasp or bee sting than from a terrorist. Um, and I know that the big corporations make money off this and the people that are in security and government rotate and revolving doors into the private companies. I mean, I get they're making money, but right. doesn't the ruling class actually care about stability? Don't they actually care about their own hind ends because they're not immune from radiation? Why don't they care? You know, the thing is that ignorance is bliss. And see, the last major geomagnetic storm happened in 1921. 90 years ago, and it was 60 years before that. So do the math. The average is every 75 years, and the last one's 90 years ago. So we're, like, overdue. They, You know, looking at ice core samplings, they say roughly every 100 years we get hit by a big daddy solar storm. You know, what, what we're talking about. Now, the thing is, ignorance is bliss. You get people like Newt Gingrich spouting comments about EMP, which is a huge threat. EMP is a real threat. But the things he says are out and out wrong. He makes statements that every electronic device would just instantly stop in the United States. Wrong. He clearly did not read the report. So if Newt Gingrich, who's you know running for president of the United States, acts like he's an expert but didn't even read the report that I read, I took the time to read it. Why didn't Newt? If he didn't read it, how many of these other guys have read it? These guys are dealing with the five-minute synopsis that somebody briefed them on. And they just plain don't oh, know. Oh, so their attitude is everything will be fried anyway, so what do we do? But instead, this is actually something that we could prepare for. I think their attitude is they just don't believe it's that bad. They, somebody tells them it's not that bad, and they don't read the real reports, and they just, you know, it's like, it's like, like you said, it's, it's wishful thinking. Like, oh, everything's going to be okay. I Pollyanna, I believe in it. Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy. Everyone, the government will take care of me. They'll come in and they'll make sure that those generators work because nobody wants a nuclear power plant to burn, to melt down, do they? So they just believe in the good fairy.
that it's all going to be okay. But the truth is, well, let me know, go one bad stuff happens. Let me go one further. I, I tell Austinites that there are two reactors. One of them is one of the biggest uh, research reactors in the world at the University of Texas in North Austin. And, and grown adults laugh at me and say, no, there isn't. I would have heard of it. They could, in 30 seconds, pull up on you know, the, the University of Texas admitting it. In fact, guys, type in uh, University of Texas uh, nuclear experimental reactor. But, but, but adults won't even admit it's there because they might have to think about a threat. I mean, this is a new level of denial. It, it is a big level of denial. And the fact that we can solve the worst problem. The end of the world as we know it for the price of a single stealth bomber. I mean, that's just a crime if they – look Look at what happened. New Orleans, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers said for 50 years that these levees were outdated and they weren't adequate and it was a disaster waiting to happen. And it's not a question of if New Orleans would get hit by a hurricane, but when. And what happened? They even appropriated money for rebuilding the levees, but they got spent somewhere else. So they just dicked around. And just ignored and said, well, they ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, it's okay, everything will be all right. And we lost most of New Orleans. Well, now we're talking about losing the world as we know it. We're talking about perhaps the extinction of all human beings on the planet for something that can be solved, prevented for the price of a single stealth bomber. I mean, it's criminal. And that's one of the reasons I wrote this article. I mean, I've been talking to the world's top scientists on this, nuclear scientists, EMP scientists, military guys, people who know about this stuff. The guy, John Kaplan, who wrote the, the giant report from Meditech on geomagnetic influences, storms, and the, and the effect on the U.S. grid. I've been talking hours on these phones with these guys, and they've been begging me to write this article and to get on your show and to get on all these shows. And they're saying, you know, Matt, We've been singing this song for a long time, and they agree 100% with me about the 400 Chernobyls. They agree. And they're saying, Matt, you got to get it out to the public because we've been singing it, but, you know, we're scientists and we're engineers and we don't, we don't get on public radio and, you know, we don't write these articles like you do for the, for the common man. You know, we write technical journals articles. So that, they've been begging me to get on your shows like yours and get this out to the public because we can solve this problem. We can do it. Well, I'm glad I saw your report. I'm, I'm glad we linked to it at InfoWars.com because uh, you are not putting a uh, exaggerated uh, spin on this. I mean, the only sane response to this is to have a debate and a discussion. But every movie I rent, ev everywhere I go, it's just terrorists are going to kill you. Terrorists are going to kill you. Give up your rights. And obviously, it's an excuse to take our liberties, whether the terrorists are real or not. But meanwhile, this, this system is just so hubris-filled that, that they just think it can't happen here. And I have top in, you know, uh, genetic engineers on, you name it. I've got the government's own reports where the GMO within three generations yeah. uh, is sterilizing all the, 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 the guinea pigs and rats. Uh, and they're just letting us eat it. And we see our health problems exploding. I mean, it's on every front. It's like... It's like humans have been given all this technology and we're still acting like like apes or something with it and just killing each other. You know, Europe said no. They looked at the data and said, wait a minute, we're not going to take your GMO. They said no. And in this country, Monsanto had their po hands in the pockets of both the Republicans and the Democrats. They got their hands in the government and they got it run right through. There's no drug in the world that would get approved if it had data like the data on GMO. I mean, and this is this is something where there's people running for profit and they just don't give a damn about the health of the world and the future of the world and the people. It's like profit and greed is number one. And and I, you know, but what does it profit you if you make two billion dollars and then your grandkids die of cancer? Short term profit. You've made the money now, you live the life now, and, well, your grandkids, you know, that's somebody else's problem. I, I don't understand it. I mean, it's not me. I mean, I wrote my book, When Technology Fails, and I borrowed on my house, and I, you know, you got all the equity in my home and three years of my life in that and, and more into When Disaster Strikes. And I wrote these books to help people cope with these coming times of change and disaster in our world where you've got to be more self-reliant, you've got to be prepared, you've got to take your own health in your own hands because the government is not watching out for you. 
And if you're going to wait and rely on the doctors to provide you with antibiotics when there's the next antibiotic superbug coming along, you're, you know, you're in trouble. So I wrote these books to help people. No, no, they're incredible. Times have changed. They're, I've read one of them. I'm going to read the other, and I'm going to try to carry them at Infowars.com. They're powerful. we got two short segments left. We're going to go right to calls and questions. But i got to tell you, uh, Mr. Stein, I look forward to having you back up for a full two-hour interview in the near future so we can go over everything you're covering uh, in these books. It's just amazing information. Uh, we're trying to save lives here, we're trying to save our planet, we're trying to save our future. This is That's big right. deal. We'll be right back. A little over. It's exactly what our design engineer from MIT is telling us, best-selling author Matthew Stein. You look at the data. And the data is GMO is killing us already. And within three generations, that's every 20 years to get up to breeding capacity on average. Devastation. Serious problems in every mammal species they've tested it on, but they don't test it on humans. I want to go to some of your calls here. Uh, but you, you, then you look at the, the reactors and the uh, solar flares and you look at everything else the system's doing. It really is just a bunch of crooks snatching and grabbing everything and then thinking a, a police state's going to protect them. Uh, and we see this kind of megalomania with Hitler. We saw it with Nero. We saw it with the Aztecs. And by the time a couple hundred Spanish showed up and defeated tens of thousands of Aztecs, it was because the society had already collapsed. But now it's a collapsed society with crazy leaders running things who've got nuclear weapons. And all of this, it's just insane. And I look forward to having our guest on for a full two hours soon. Uh, let's go to Mark in New York. You're on with our guest. Go ahead, Mark. Hello, Alex. Uh, Southwestern New York calling. Um, Chuck Harder, I'm sure you're familiar with the name, is up on this and is trying to uh, develop a system that would um, possibly help the average homeowner deal with uh, anything but an E3-level pulse. Um, he was on with Joyce Riley a few months ago talking about this uh, EMP that's slated for about a year from now. Well, uh, uh, let me ask our guests that question. Can they predict w w when an EMP is going to hit generally? Um, no, but they do know that we have a solar maximum. It's 11, Every 11 years, the sun's poles flip, and that's when it burps the most. But any, even in a solar minimum... A giant storm, a big burp from the sun could happen. A big CME could launch towards the planet just as bad as 1921. So it's really kind of a crap shot and a roll of a die. What they do know is that we're, it looks like we're quite active in this period heading up to the next solar maximum. So there's a decent chance. Now, if we're lucky, we'll get a blow like South Africa 2003 that fried 14 transformers, and it'll be enough to screw things up and really scare people enough to really fix the problem. If we're unlucky, we get a 1921 or an 1859 or even worse kind of storm, and, and it's game over, at least for society as, as in the as we know it. Caller, what was your other quick question? Uh, silicon chips versus transistors. Uh, I wanted to mention that uh, the silicon IC chip obviously is affected but the transistor that is that that's carbon right is that correct no transistor is silicon it actually turns out now it, here's the thing in a solar storm you don't have the short term super fast nanosecond effect that fries chips you have the the long slow burn which is called the e3 the e1 is like an emp effect from a nuke going off and the E1 is what fries chips. Now, it turns out that all of the chips made, most of the chips made in the last five years to the EU standard have built-in electrostatic protection. To, and, and, and so most of those will survive the E1. So the latest electronics. But it, what's the bigger concern? See, people say, am I more concerned about a terrorist EMP attack or a solar storm? I'm much more concerned about the solar storm than the EMP attack. EMP attack is bad. It could collapse the country, it could collapse the stock market, could, and it would probably shut down Washington, D.C. for a long period of time. But at least the rest of the world would still be there to come in and fix. And maybe some nukes would go off because of the EMP, primarily probably in the 